Hello everyone, my name is Eric Magidson and I want to introduce you to the basics of a Cisco Meraki network. So when we talk about core networking infrastructure, our security appliance, our appliances, our switch, our access points, any way that our users are going to consume our network, that's what we're talking about here. And Cisco Meraki has a great product that's available to really simply manage the the network infrastructure from anywhere. So primarily this video is for my students, um, but I wanted to share it with everyone. I manage a few production networks that are built on Meraki equipment, and I can attest that it is simple, it is easy. Uh, you definitely need to have a core understanding of networks and protocols and etc. That's no different. This isn't gonna be a end user manage my network. You need a network professional to do this, uh, especially when it comes to security. But let's go ahead and as you can see, I'm at the login screen for the Cisco Meraki, Meraki cloud-based login and we'll go ahead and log in. Now from here, what we're gonna see is a basic network that's been set up for my students. And we can see that although we haven't done any configuration, there are folks that have logged into the open Wi-Fi that's open by default. Now, what my students are going to do is they're going to come in, they're going to use a specific IP structure, they're going to create DHCP, they're going to create some VLANs, they're going to assign VLANs to specific ports on the switch, and they're going to create both a private wireless network as well as a guest network. Now the great thing about the guest network, and that's what you're seeing here, is that uh, it's on a different, completely different IP schema. It is segmented securely from, or should be segmented securely when you're talking about a guest network, okay? Um, we can create many networks as we'll see. So network wide, normally where we start is on this base dashboard and we can see sort of who's logged in, whether they're wireless or wired to the devices. Over here is the overall view of the traffic, where the clients are going, what traffic basics that they're consuming. We can come out here and look at the different protocols, the usage, the percentage of usage, etc. So let's go into the security appliance and normally what we do is we have these monitoring and configuration sections, okay? So we know that if we're just wanting to look at what's going on, we go to the monitor, we can go to security center, routing table, over here is where we would configure stuff. So let's just start with the appliance status here. And the first thing my students are gonna do is rename the device so that they can easily find the device. Down here is gonna be the static IP address that's set for the routable device uh, for connectivity into the production network. So if you notice, we could set up uh, spare devices for redundancy. This is the main uh, security appliance here addressing in VLAN so that they'll come into here to do things like network address translation. We could do pass through VPN. We can configure routes here, dynamic DNS. So if we wanted to change our DNS to um, a more secure, we can, uh, we can register, etc. So DHCP, this device can do DHCP or you could have a server on your device do DHCP. As you can see by default, one has been set up here on a 192.168.128 network, a DHCP server. My students are gonna go in and change this IP addressing to a 172.16 network so that their network for their small business can grow substantially. We can set up multiple um, multiple DHCPs based on VLANs. So again, we can come down here, we can create additional VLANs for devices that we might wanna segment or segmented areas of our business. So we might have a secure VLAN, say for the financial department. We might have a secure VLAN for IOT traffic, stuff that we don't necessarily, giving the insecurity of those devices, want on our network today. Uh, firewall. So if there's any firewall that we need to do, et cetera. So that's just some of the basics. Site to site VPN, we have a client VPN through Meraki, which is very easy to set up. 
I have access through my Android phone, iPhone, uh, Windows machines, uh, Macs, you name it. Active Directory integration, so if we want to, we can connect to a Radius server for single sign-on to, um, to features and functionalities within the core Meraki network. We can shape some traffic, prioritize. Um, great content filtering for things like adult content, so we can filter that right off the bat. So that's the security appliance. We'll go in and look at the switch here real quick. So if we come in here, we can see that uh, our network only has one switch, and we can click on it, and we can see that it's an eight port plus a couple fiber optic connections uh, for linking uh, high speed together. We can see what devices are going on, who's connected, what they're doing, etc. We can look at ports and configure ports. Simply by clicking, you'll see that right here is a device that's connected. It happens to be an access point. We can see down here what the device is. It's a Meraki MR42 access point. Um, and we can configure that. So we can come into port configuration here. We can give ports specific names if we want. We can tag ports, so sometimes we'll create tags for things like VLAN tagging, where we want to make a specific VLAN, perhaps over wireless network, over many access points, available only certain on certain access points. So we can go in and say, okay, here's five access points that need to broadcast this SSID, and only these access points. We can do that through VLAN tagging, and it's actually very easy. One great security thing I like is that we can disable unused ports so someone can't simply come in without gaining access here and simply clicking the enable button. They can't come in and connect to a port uh, without enabling it first. So <laughs> people aren't going to be able to just plug in the wall and get on your network. So when we talk about security, we always want to start with the physical security. You know, securing the computers in our locations, securing the ports, securing the devices. We have power over Ethernet on this switch. I can disable that. Another thing I can do is schedule switches. So I can schedule when the switch port is available. So believe it or not, if, if you've got a large network and you know it's not used between midnight and 5 a.m. in the morning, you can shut off all these ports and save all that power to things like phones and etc. So um, we can decide if this is a trunk or an access, what VLANs can connect to this particular port. So if you notice, we're not having to do any command line interface to make all this stuff happen. STP guards, uh, there's our port schedule that we talked about, port isolation. So if we want to configure a port, say put it on a specific VLAN we've created, we just come in and do it there. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. Now, for our wireless, we can look at our specific access points here in this network. We only have one. We see that there's a firmware upgrade that needs to be done. This is wonderful. It keeps your equipment up to, up to date. I always go in. I've had no problems, knock on wood, with any updates that Meraki has installed. So as soon as I do these, I go in and install those updates. So if, if you notice here, there's only one access point. Again, my students will go in and give these devices good configurable names, letting them know where the device is, how it is, etc. So when we come in here, we can give it a name. We can set a location for the AP. Um, one thing I didn't mention is although we're in an organization called Central Oregon Community College, I can actually configure many networks and manage many networks from this configuration. So if I have multiple locations throughout the world, I can manage the networks from here. Okay, so naming, as you can imagine, becomes really important. Okay, so there's, you know, our um, local LAN IP, so we're going to see these change. We have our public IP, which uh, of course I'm blocking right now for security purposes, gateways and DNS. So this is our access point. We can come in and look at event logs, see who's logged in, when they've logged in, some basic information. So here's Laurel's iPhone, and we can click on Laurel's iPhone and see what Laurel's doing. We can look at the traffic for this particular client that was connected and, you know, click see some details as to what they're doing. We can do a packet capture from here uh, right within. We can look at the event log for this client. We can add notes, etc. 
Let's go back to wireless real quick and take a look at SSIDs. So again, notice we have access control and traffic shaping all at the wireless network just like you would expect. So here is a default network that was created. If you notice, it's an open network, so we can simply come in and create many wireless networks that would broadcast again on all devices or specific access points that we want to broadcast some. So we can reduce our um, exposure by reducing what access points handle what SSIDs and of course we don't have to broadcast so we can go ahead and um, you know limit that one of the nice things is that it's really easy to create splash pages for things like uh, access agreements or guest networks you know if you're getting on this guest, guest network you're agreeing that we're not liable for anything you download etc upload um, we do have the ability to do content filtering on our guest networks which works really well so that folks aren't connecting and getting on um, say a bunch of social net uh, media we can change bandwidth so we can limit how much bandwidth is available for certain networks so if we have high bandwidth but we want our guests to be limited we can do that as well there's just a ton of stuff that we can do inside the Meraki so Hopefully this was a great introduction to you and a great introduction to my students so that they know where to find the particulars on things like, um, let me go back to the access point, things like addressing and DHCP and firewall and VPN and all those things that they're going to configure um, while they're working in the Meraki equipment. Take care. Have a great day.